In this video, we're going to be diving deep into one of the most ambitious projects I'm seeing in the NFT space, and that is Nanoverse. So right off the bat, you know, in my previous videos, maybe a couple months ago, I talked about this project called Nano Pass. Essentially, it's kind of like this land style NFT where you buy a piece of land, and then like every week or every so often, they're going to give you random prizes for whoever holds these things. Right now, the price of a Nanoverse Pass is pretty much 1.5 ETH, and then they, you know, have been giving out really interesting prizes from whitelist spots to these shards, which we'll talk about later, and they also gave away a lot of free NFTs that have increased in value over time. Definitely worth it in some capacity if you're into that. But what I want to talk about is, you know, NanoPass is really just one of the projects that really was the seed to grow this entire universe. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And for these specific projects we are talking about today, they actually offered our community some whitelist spots. So if you want to check that out or get other whitelist opportunities, make sure to join the Parallax Discord. So the first thing we got to do is we got to cover who is behind NanoPass and this whole universe, right? And they rebranded their company from NanoPass to Nanoverse to clarify to everybody like, hey, we're not just one project, we're going to be a whole universe and ecosystem of projects. And so the mastermind or brain behind all this is going to be this guy, Ray, which is a Nanoverse dev. And he's the founder of pretty much all these projects we're gonna talk about today. It's gonna be Nanoverse HQ, Project PXN, NFT Keys, and Oxygen Lab. So they got a lot on their plate. They're trying to do a lot at the same time. So we're gonna dive into each one of these. What are the pros? What are the cons? What are the risks? So we talked about Nanopass already. So what's the phase two of this entire operation? And listening to the most recent AMA with Ray, the next stage of Nanopass is to do a picture profile project, and it's gonna be a 3D avatar project. So obviously for Nanoverse, they're really hitting that waifu anime style kind of vibe, right? And of course, there's a really big market of people that really like this stuff and are willing to pay a lot of money for it as well. And for the actual images or how these avatars will look. Um, there's only a couple teasers out, but I don't think that really represents what they're building because from my understanding, they're gonna be building like 3D avatars that you can use in different metaverses that support those specific files. But the really interesting thing that they're building on top of that is they're building artificial intelligence. So when I first learned about it, I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why would a NFT project do AI, right? It sounds very complicated. And actually it is very complicated, right? So the thesis that they have, and this is just me kind of summarizing what they said, and I could be totally wrong. Ray said that as time goes on, as NFTs become more popular, people are gonna spend a lot more time at home. Uh, living in the metaverse, or we're all really kind of doing it already by spending a lot of our hours and days in front of a computer. So the thesis is, you know, people get lonely in front of a computer all day, right? They need some companionship. Not everybody has a lot of friends they can talk to. And so this AI that they're building, is kind of like a virtual assistant like Siri, but they're trying to build so much more on top of that. So like with Siri, you can tell it to do things like well, set an alarm clock, remind me to do this thing at this time, send a text message back, right? It's kind of like if X, then do Y. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to train this AI to be more like a companion so that when you talk to it, it helps you out in your everyday life. You're not just telling it what to do, but it's actually like a companion in a sense. And I know that sounds kind of weird at first, but we've seen a lot of different movies out there where they created an AI that helps you out in your life. Kind of like uh, if you ever played Halo before, there's like an AI helping out Master Chief doing his thing. So if you think about like long-term vision wise, if Nanoverse is building a universe, then the land that they sold you in the beginning, that's kind of like your place where you hang out. Then the PFP project, that's a 3D kind of model, can live in that 3D space and you could hang out with it, train it to do different stuff and it gets smarter and smarter and becomes a companion, right? And so it's kind of like building layers on top of each other and then, you know, who knows in the future what's gonna happen next. Another interesting dynamic of this whole thing is that, you know, there's these ideas of shards. So essentially the nano passes that you get can randomly give you shards every week or I forgot how often it is. And then you take those shards and then you give it to your 3D avatar and then you level it up and you make it smarter. Instead of just like allowing people to get the full access to the entire thing, you kind of have to level up your NFT and then that also increases the value of the NFT. So it's a very interesting game mechanic of like introducing NFT elements, gamify elements into artificial intelligence. From the anime that I saw, they're really hiring like top tier people from, you know, big companies to help work on Nanoverse and they have like 30 employees and growing. And so they have a lot of funding to like make this all happen. So it's really interesting to see what they're doing. And if you kind of compare that to, let's say, other brands or projects doing that waifu meta as well. A lot of these projects, they're just going to come and go. They're not really going to put in the resources to make something last a long time. Just from the surface level, in my understanding, it seems like Nanoverse is really trying to build a long-term brand. So the next thing we're going to cover is going to be Phantom Network, also known as Project PXN on Twitter. And so when I first saw this, I was thinking like, they're already doing one picture profile. Why are they doing another one at the same time? It sounds a little cash grabby, right? Essentially, from my understanding, it's kind of like if you think of Nanoverse as a universe, similar to how Marvel 
or DC has their own universe. You can have Spider-Man, you can have Iron Man, you can have Doctor Strange, right? And they can all exist at the same time and build their own IPs. And they can all come together for you know certain special movies like the Avenger and stuff like that. And so Nanoverse is trying to build this entire ecosystem where it's not just like one picture profile, but they have multiple different brands that maybe can interact with each other in the future. Now, there's not a lot of information available on this online. A lot of it is just like me speculating or me like listening to an interview and kind of sharing what I learned. But if they do pull this off, it's quite unique because they'll be able to be the Marvel, but for NFTs in the anime waifu kind of space, right? And I think there is a space for that. To be fair though, the argument is that if you kind of divide your resources into multiple NFT projects, can you really focus on making each one of them great? It's gonna be a question of what leaders they have in place, how much resources they have, how much funding that they have to build all these things out at the same time. So that remains to be seen. But the good part is that, you know, if they build technology, let's say artificial intelligence for one project, they can literally just copy that over to another project. And so when one project benefits from like a technology breakthrough, all their projects can benefit in this way. So I think if they tie it all together and make these all these things talk to each other and increase the value of each asset over time, definitely they do have a shot. But again, it's kind of like a startup. So you definitely take your risk when you invest into these projects, but it's quite an interesting concept. Under the Nanoverse ecosystem, it's gonna be this project called NFT Keys. And it was started by Ray, who started all those other projects that I just talked about. And this other developer who used to be a developer at Kaiju Kings and they started this company together, I believe. Well, essentially there's this niche, if you weren't already familiar with it, it's like mechanical keyboards. For me, I have a mechanical keyboard as well. It's a really popular niche. Like it's growing in size very fast over the past like, couple of years. So mechanical keyboards, it's kind of like, instead of using like boring and not so good keyboards that you get when you buy a computer, why not customize it and deck it out? And so there are people who are spending hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars to build these mechanical keyboards. And not only that, but they will collect a bunch of mechanical keyboards. You know, people might have like, you know, 10 mechanical keyboards and each one will cost like 500 to a thousand dollars. Obviously you can't use all these keyboards at the same time. You can only literally use one at a time, but it's more like a collector's item and you know, there's a whole experience of typing. So what they've done is they identify this niche and then they're going after it in the NFT space and they're gonna create some kind of NFT that represents this community. Why this is a smart marketing play is because they're tapping into a starving market that's willing to spend a lot of money on keyboards and now they're able to do it in an NFT way. The interesting part is that when you're buying these NFTs, they're gonna have some kind of token mechanic where you can farm tokens, not too much information about it yet, but you can use those tokens to buy physical keyboards that they will be making in real life. Who will they partner with and how they will make this keyboard? They haven't announced that yet, but then that's essentially the model. It's kind of like, what would it look like if a mechanical keyboard company created an NFT? And this is exactly what you get. So I think if they do a good job with how it looks, how it feels, and they just kind of replicate the success they had with their other past projects and duplicate it into this particular niche, I think it's it's something that can do well because there's a starving market for it. There's not a lot of competitors. Actually, there's no, I can't think of a single competitor right now who's making NFT keyboards. So definitely a project to keep on your radar. Now the last company, and we're talking about a lot of companies within one company, right? Uh, the last thing we're gonna talk about is going to be this thing called Oxygen Labs, which essentially is kind of like an NFT launchpad. The idea of, you know, Oxygen Lab is essentially like if Nanoverse is building this whole universe, the way you increase the value of each NFT part of this ecosystem is to provide a platform for other entrepreneurs to build here. So if they're like, hey, you know, we're going to give you X amount of funding if you build a dream NFT that you always wanted to do, and somehow that has to plug into what we're doing by you creating a project in our ecosystem, we're gonna help push you out. Not only that, your project's gonna increase in value and by you coming into our ecosystem, our ecosystem also increases in value. So if you can see like over time, if more and more projects want to be part of this ecosystem and the launch pad is really good and they really give you the funding or the marketing or the advising services that you might want to have a successful NFT project, then I can see this becoming something big in the future. Now it is new and there's not a lot of projects on this yet. So, you know, you can't say it's a huge success, but um, definitely has potential. And so overall, when I kind of look at this whole Nanoverse ecosystem, for me, I think the founder Ray is pretty smart in terms of like marketing and hiring top tier talent, building out different brands, finding entrepreneurs to partner with to build these brands, right? And so I would say like that is a pro in that they can bring a lot of people in to build something. The only con I would have is like, because they're building so many things at the same time in such a short amount of time, I wonder how their resources are being spent, right? Like if one engineer is working on a certain project, then they don't have the hours to spend on another project. Then who's doing that, right? They gotta hire another person. I think it really comes down to leadership and like asset 
in uh, human capital management, like handling people, allocating the right funds into the right places to create value. Outside looking in, we don't really have a full scope of what that looks like because they are a private company. But uh, overall, if they pull it off, it's gonna be something really cool. The art, it looks pretty good. The, so far, the utility has been good from my understanding of what people say about the project. And I know a few friends that have nano passes and they have been pretty happy with their experience overall. So, so overall, I'm pretty bullish and I'm excited to see what they have in store for the future. So with that said, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.